Okay, hi there and welcome to another in our series of microeconomic analysis videos. Uh, we're trying to develop good chains of reasoning, putting together a series of points to, to build stronger analysis in your economics exams. The basis, of course, for evaluation as you write your longer answers. In this micro video, we're going to take a quick look at the concept of a natural monopoly. A natural monopoly, although it's uh, hinted at in, in the words, it doesn't mean that there's only one business operating in the market. But a natural monopoly has a particular shape of cost curve such that um, there's a tendency for one business to dominate the market in the long run. Here's our question. How is a natural monopoly different from other industries? How is a natural monopoly different from other industries? So as the key point before we build our chain of reasoning, the point to take away from this is that a natural monopoly benefits from huge, very large economies of scale. That is the key to understanding this particular type of market structure. Start off with a good definition to build your chain of reasoning. A natural monopoly is a special case where one large scaled business can potentially supply the entire market at a lower average cost than if you had multiple providers. The words in red here are, are some of our favorite connective phrases. They help build the chain of reasoning, give the examiner confidence. So this is because of the nature of cost in a natural monopoly industry. Typically, in these kind of sectors, there are very high fixed costs of production, but low marginal costs. Then you add in an example, it gets an application mark, for example, the supply of water or the, the, uh, the, the network providing electricity or gas to houses and businesses. All of these things, grid infrastructures, if you like, they involve be building a big network infrastructure. As a result, another connective phrase here, fixed costs are huge, but the marginal cost of adding one extra user, a consumer, a household or new business to the grid, the marginal cost is very low. Fixed costs are high, marginal costs are low in a natural monopoly. And therefore, the average total cost or average cost will continue to fall as extra users are added to the network. And this is a good example of an internal economy of scale, sometimes called a network economy. This means that long run average cost, LRAC, may fall across all ranges of output to the extent that only one firm might reach the minimum efficient scale of production. Now notice here, uh, if you take a snapshot of this chain of reasoning, I'm using four connective phrases. This is because, as a result, therefore, this means that. Those are four short connective phrases that help um, build your chain of, um, of analytical reasoning. And if you can build those little phrases into your paragraph structure, that would really help your exam mark. Uh, looking at the diagram, uh, this is the key, I suppose, to a natural monopoly. It's the shape of the average cost curve. And the falling LIAC curve means that it may be more productively efficient to have a single provider of a national infrastructure for example, a rail network, perhaps, or an electricity or gas distribution system. The reason being that natural monopolies require big, huge investment spending, both to maintain and improve the network access for consumers. Uh, typically, we associate a natural monopoly with a utility industry that requires a, an infrastructure. You know, traditional examples mentioned already, gas, water, electricity, and, and what have you, and some forms of tran transport infrastructure. But I think increasingly, if you want to be savvy with the examiner, we can also think about a natural monopoly in digital platform businesses, such as web search, streaming services, e-commerce, those kind of things. And some of these businesses, Netflix, Amazon, Google, Uber, many of these digital businesses have established significant market power extremely quickly. And indeed, they've become dominant businesses with, with actually little room left for, for sizable and scale competition. So perhaps... The, the digital platform businesses are, I feel like, the modern day equivalent of the old style utilities in terms of being a natural monopoly. 
So there we go. Uh, there's our chain of reasoning. Exam reports make it clear that examiners are looking for students to build chains of reasoning to get top analysis marks. Diagrams help. So too does the way that you shape your paragraph. Thank you.